Australia survived a nail-biting penalty shootout with the U.S. to advance to their first final in any FIFA competition. Now can the Socceroos make history with the biggest upset ever? Brazil also needed penalties to escape their foe, Ghana. This is Brazil's third straight final, and they want to finish the tournament as they start it. It's Australia versus Brazil next. Under-17 World Cup Final. You're watching the Brazilian side, the defending champions, take their national anthem. We're in North Harbor Stadium in Auckland, New Zealand. The final match of this tournament. I'm your host, Alan Hopkins. We have a splendid final for you, a rematch from the opening match up for both these teams in the tournament. Brazil and Australia, you see the Brazilian contingency looking for another honor to add to your impressive, impressive list of championships won by this country. Take a look at the Australian lineup. In the gold, Kedwell Van Stratton played well in the semifinal win, saving a penalty against the USA. Cansdale Sheriff also looked good. Aaron Golding scored a goal for the Australians against the USA. Scott McDonald's another striker to look for. Dylan McAllister, he tallied in the match between these two teams earlier. For Brazil, Marquinhos scored and Carlos Enrique scored for the Brazilians against Australia in their opening match between these two teams. Leo and Walker, the strong captain for the Brazilian side. Adriano and Leonardo with Kaká will be also in the front line attack. Well, this is a matchup the fifth time that these two teams have met up in this tournament. Brazil has won four of the meetings. Australia won the very first meeting back in Montreal, Canada. Between these two teams, Brazil has owned ever since. Philip Sharp from England will be your official. Take a look there. The two captains for these two sides. Walker for Brazil. Mark Burns for Australia, the number six player. As they are discussing their options. On the road to get here, Australia only lost once, which is to Brazil in a rain-soaked match earlier in Group C play. They beat USA in the penalty kick shootout. Ghana was surpassed by the Brazilians in their own penalty kick shootout. Ghana won third place in the opening match of, the, of this final day, beating the USA 2-0. Take a look at the referee there, Kairos Vasarets from Greece. He will be the man dutifully honored with doing the last match of this tournament. It's been a wonderful tournament. The stars of soccer for the future on display. Enjoy the first 45 minutes. I'm Alan Hopkins, I'll be back. The semi-final or quarter-finals, there's Anderson. And uh, there's no question the Brazilians pulled a very sneaky uh, piece of maneuvering yesterday, having him on crutches and his foot heavily bandaged trying to push Australia off the set. Perhaps it was just safety first, but uh, he certainly looks to be walking freely. Well, not only the players, but uh, this man, his heart would be beating a little faster. Seconds away from the opening whistle in this World Cup final. A great crowd here in attendance. And the fourth, first 45 minutes underway here at North Harbour Oval. Brazil in their alternative blue strip, Australia in the traditional green and gold. It'll be interesting to see how both teams settle their systems. Huge crowd. Over 20,000 in FIFA have opened the hill behind the Brazilian goal, which is a great uh, move from them. Normally not FIFA practice. So the crowds and the tournament has been so well positioned and handled. There's the Australian bench on the far right. Kelly Cross, the assistant coach. And McAllister with an early touch. A lot of colour, the colours of the world on display. 
and there'll be nerves from both teams. Certainly Brazil and their coach Carlos Cesare have the utmost of respect for Australia after that opening round match in Christchurch. Here's Bruno, the overlapping player. Ball into the box with the outside of the foot, but there's no player at that back post. Number 16, Leonardo was floating in. And Steve, there's Les Scheinfluck, the first played for Australia back in 1958. And he was the first ever World Cup captain of Australia. First scored the first World Cup goal at 65 against South Korea. So yes. there's a lot of history with him. Well, irrespective of what happens today for him, it's been a marvellous career in Australia. And uh, he'll be wondering if a dream can come true for him. I know he's a uh, very passionate guy about the game. And I'm sure he's looking forward to this one more than any other game he's been involved with. Interesting to note, too, that Australia started with their normal formation of uh, two centre-backs and a sweeper, two wing-backs, three in midfield, two pushing forward and one sitting in a wee bit, and two strikers. And Brazil look to be, at the moment, in a familiar 4-4-2 formation, and uh, that will be very mobile and very fluid. And that's one thing that uh, Carlos Cesare will be looking at. There he is, second from the left the helm when Brazil won the championship back in 1997 in Egypt beating Ghana in the final Adriano crashes in Golding lovely little ball for McDonald down the left great skills by the number 11 turns it in and uh, the footing momentarily lost there by Ricardo maybe a caution on McDonald a stern chat to from the referee and I wonder uh, if the conditions here are going to play some effect. Donald knocks a ball in with his left foot. The player's slipping in the box. That happened in the previous game. And uh, you certainly don't want to fall over in the penalty box, your own penalty box, in the World Cup final. Nadarski, very strong in the air. Amazingly, Brazil were unchanged in their three group matches as they earned the free kick through Kaká in Christchurch, unchanged, and the big difference in the quarter-final and semi-final is their number 16, Leonardo, who scored four goals. He's yes, had a great spark up front. Well, hasn't he looked a good player too? And it's getting fairly willing out there. It's the second strong talent from Scott McDonald as Eduardo went down. You see Leonardo just leaning in there. And uh, I don't think McDonald could stop. I don't think there was any real intent in that one. Eduardo was just shielding it. But took a bang in his back for his efforts. As Madarski lets it run through to Van Straten. And wasn't he a hero of that semi-final? Blocking the penalty from Demarcus Beasley. There's such high drama both here in Auckland and in Christchurch. Pantelis, McDonald, two goals in the tournament. Got them through with that uh, single goal against Mali. Yes, I'm sure all these players are going to take home some great memories from previous games and uh, hopefully the biggest prize of all from this one. Marquinhos is the big stopper, number three. Very strong in the air. Will be a factor from the set pieces. Anderson. Who's the player carrying the injury, but uh, looks to be moving very freely. Uh, Lewis Brain tested him out with that challenge. And very the Australians will be very keen. Their address from Les Scheinfeld yesterday was very emotional, Steve, and just asking them to, to find that extra 10% required. Yes, and uh, I'm sure they would give it anyway. And the one thing I would suggest that he was talking about was actually not necessarily lifting the game, because I'm sure they're going to lift it. It was actually just to remain calm. The one thing they couldn't do is actually get excited in this sort of a game. Because uh, if you do, mistakes can happen. And you regret them for the rest of your life. Podarski forced the hurry with a clearance. The car is at midfield. He's a very creative player. Here's Eduardo. Attempted one-two play there, but Madarski is so 
determined and he reads the play so well. Bruno flew in with the boot. And the, the touchline is Ricky Herbert. Ricky, what's the conditions like? Well, well, guys, it's uh, the wind has just returned slightly. We've uh, had it blowing from our left to right. And uh, the rain, which returned half an hour ago, has nicely left. And we're down to a little bit of drizzle. The pitch is in wonderful condition. The moisture, though, has left it a little bit slippery on top. And the guys in the early stages just finding it a little bit difficult to, to uh, maintain their footing. And the ball in behind the defence. Here's Leonardo. One defender to get around, and that's Golding. Ball to the near post, well covered by Madaski. And Australia look to be keeping their shape at the back. What we do on both sides at the moment, who not wanting to give anything away, and just feeling each other out. Australia started brightly. So have Brazil. Brazil probably with the uh, more purpose. As Pantelis knocks it down the line. And actually wins a free kick. Is out. It's a pretty hard taskmaster. And if I understood Portuguese, I would have got a better feeling about his last address to the players in their final training session, but uh, judging by the players' reaction, it was also very emotional. And that's what uh, a coach would be doing, appealing to these young players to really rise and sense the occasion. Well, it's uh, a real unbelievable day for these guys, and they would certainly not want to make any mistakes, and it's really up to Les to actually get them in the right frame of mind. Sometimes you've got to lift players and pick them up, sometimes you've got to bring them down, calm it down, and I think today they'd be absolutely pumped for this one, and uh, I'd suggest that uh, the comments were just keep it calm, uh, don't get too excited. Keep playing the way you have in the past, and the chances will come. Leonardo has lost his footing there. What Ricky mentioned earlier, certainly coming true. Shifty surface on the top. There's been a bit of rain today. But uh, North Harbour Stadium has certainly soaked up the rain over the past couple of weeks. They show, show and flag guys is really encouraging his players in this early stages to push forward. He wants the back, back three to uh, make sure they're pushing in and the front runners to stop the Brazilians from playing out from the back. And pressure in the Brazilian half. And that's one thing that they would want to do is actually get the ball out of the back because they've got players that can play and they'd love to get it on the deck and build the moves going forward. And Australia will want to counter that and get a, get a tackle in first. Pantelis races away on the left-hand side and plays a ball to McDonald. McDonald doing some good work down that left-hand flank. Scott McDonald took a deflection. Here's Lewis Brain. Lovely ball by McAllister Square. North to the back post. Rabunia comes out and scores. And a very clean take by the custodian from Brazil. And a good confidence builder early. Yes, it was. It's a great take. Great cross in. Rubino came out a long way. Well up. Nobody was going to get that but him. And the crowd down below us went absolutely crazy. Well, at any level, it's such a great honour to represent Brazil. 160 million people. And over 80% follow the code, the world game. And here's a portion of the fanatical sport. North Harbour Stadium. Good work by Adriano, big striker, gets away from Burns. Back post ball, Leonardo has to rush across. He's got four goals in the tournament, did not start the first three matches and chimed in with a hat-trick against Paraguay in the quarterfinals in Dunedin. And his shot took a deflection in the semi-finals, but he was uh, credited with the goal. So that's four for the tournament. Both these teams progressing from the group of death in Group C in Christchurch. And uh, it was quite evident that they were both good sides. As, as were Mali and Germany, got knocked out of that group. Still tentative, not wanting to give the ball away. Anderson, 
Lovely ball to Leonardo down the left. His marker slipped in Mark Burns. Square, Walker, leaves it for Leo. Lovely skills, dances and shoots from long range. Knocked out by Van Stratton. He momentarily lost sight of the ball as it bubbled up. And a superb piece of work by the number seven. What a great bit of skill. He skipped past Pantelis like he wasn't there. Struck it well. Van Stratton fumbled, but he collected it in the second attempt. And uh, Leo is certainly one of the stars of this team. There he is, and I uh, I have a feeling we've got a star in the making there. And it's such a wonderful and gifted player, loads of skill, and prepared to take people on. Lewis Brain getting forward. North. With the hash tag, the early ball in. Leo closed him down quickly. Brazil looking very comfortable on the ball. Nice switch of play down the right, Eduardo. And I think we can expect Brazil to be comfortable on the ball. But providing it's sort of in that area where they are now, that won't trouble the Australian defence. They'll be quite happy to keep them out there. Wayne Schroe, who's very much the holding midfielder, the distributor, has that defensive role so well. McAllister, 1-2 with Schroe. Turns his marker inside out and then delivers a delightful ball to Cansdell Sheriff, who just runs out of room. And that's the one thing he was talking about doing more often, is getting forward, Steve. Yes, and he's, uh, he's done well in that position in the early games. Young player from Leeds United, got a good left foot, and uh, you can expect him to go charging down that left line when the opportunity occurs. Moment, just one or two players just do, do look a little tentative. I've watched Pantelis a couple of times, and he's, he's taken the easy, easy option out. And uh, I would think he's one of the players that have got to be the playmakers for him. He's got to be the one that's got a wee bit of craft, a wee bit of skill. We know he's got it, but sometimes these big occasions, players get stage fright. And uh, you know, somebody's got to put the hand up and say, "Today, I'm going to make this my stage." What a stage. A packed house. North Harbour Stadium. Long floating ball into the box. McAllister up. And a good challenge on Robinho. It may provide a caution for the number 17. Replay will be very interesting. Well, if he does, it's not necessary because uh, McAllister had every right to go for that. There's, there's uh, Council Sheriff in with the ball to the back post. McAllister is a big boy. The ball's played up there for him to go for. He goes for a challenge, not even looking at the uh, goalkeeper. I thought it was a fair challenge. Rabino did well. He collected the ball. But uh, maybe, maybe he's just letting the referee know that uh, keep your eye on this guy, McAllister. But I don't think there's too much in that one. Well, Australia perhaps have the edge over Brazil in the air with Mark Burns, McAllister, Ladarski at the back. Well, Mark Burns has been an absolute tower of strength for Australia. He's been uh, a real solid performer. He scored, and uh, he keeps cajoling his young team on. And probably one set for a good future in the game, too. Bruno, nice ball down the line for Kakar. He's closed down well by Kansas Sheriff. Clean tackle. Brazil throw in the forward third. Eduardo, square for Leo. Tries to play it through for Leonardo. Here's Leo still going. Surrounded by three defenders and a final shot in the end by Eduardo. Crowd absolutely loving that footwork from Leo. Wonderful skills. Quick feet. Watch this. Two or three of you. I'll drag it that way and this way. How about one over the top? Turns out. And actually, Shro got a foot in, and Eduardo knocked it over the top. Lovely skill. The delight of youthful exuberance. It's Indeed, amazing. isn't it great? And it's actually wonderful to see all these teams, the way they celebrate the goals. They absolutely love it. Sometimes uh, it's not well thought of by uh, the establishment, but hey, these kids love it. Jade North, long throw into the area, good flick back by McAllister. 
admirably well done by Walker, the Brazilian captain. Here's Kenstall Sheriff. Moves the ball up. Leonardo looks for his front runner. Adriano was when Stratton had to get off his line and outside the 18 yard box. And here's a chance for Brazil. Leonardo with a shot. Side netting. Oh boy. Talk about nerves. Les Schoenflug off the bench. He knows what it's like. Leonardo going racing in here. Knocks it well wide, but uh, I actually thought Van Stratton in the first clearance could have actually stayed in his box and collected it, but nerves played a part. He came out of his box, had to clear it, and uh, knocked it straight to a Brazilian player. Well, today we'll test everything. The resolve, the judgment, the character. These players would never have experienced the pressure they're under at the moment. Here's Lewis Brain, lovely square ball. Pantelis, he's got another overlapping player. It's Kansler Sheriff. But too much weight in that pass from Lucas Pantelis. Yeah, so Lucas is a tidy player. Got some lovely skills, but just at this stage, just looks a little nervous. And no wonder he's playing against the biggest and best footballing nation in the world. Four senior World Cups for Brazil, the most recent, USA 1994, and they have been such a powerhouse in world football. And they have fans all over the world too. Yes, I think everybody's expected to be able to play on the Brazilian side. They've all got skill, they're very mobile, very athletic. I thought Carlos Azez's quote yesterday, Steve, was quite pathetic. As the brain gets free down the right, we'll continue that in the moment. Lewis Brain from Adelaide Force. Cuts to the byline. Doesn't earn that corner when he's searching for it. But Carlos Cesare, the Brazilian coach, said finishing second in Brazil is like finishing last. Yes, exactly. And uh, no doubt the pressure's on his young players too. McAllister looks to nick that one on. Burns wins it. Schroel. McAllister, the overlapping player is not encouraging move. This for Australia. Good ball in, Marquinhos. Defensive head of it. McAllister's still going. His first touch just got away from him. Well, that's a confidence builder for them. Again, the calls are going in from the side. Get your head up. Keep it going. It's good for us. That'll be coming in from Australia. And it was a nice little move down the right hand side. Great shot that uh, Hill behind the Brazilian goal, the Australian goal, in fact. Yes, it's absolutely marvellous that uh, FIFA have allowed that end to be opened. It's sort of part of Kiwi sporting culture to spend time on the bank with your family. And uh, no doubt they're enjoying it. And for those that don't know, the Joeys are the Australian team. That's their nickname. And uh, how, how they've done Australia proud. Here's Leonardo. Takes it on the chest. We flick back to the corner of the area. Kaká now makes the run. Cancel Sheriff covers him. And that is a goal kick to Australia. Carlos is there. He's at the edge of the area where he can operate in. Well, other than uh, Leo's a little bit of skill on the edge of the box and the shot that resulted from that. There's not been a fantastic amount yet from Brazil and I think uh, Australia have probably been a little more dangerous in and around that penalty box. And they're growing in confidence. Free kick to Australia as Callister has a series clear at Eduardo following this challenge. And also, I like the shape of the stage of the uh, Australian centre-backs and sweeper. Adarski's given them a little more depth this time. In the last game, he didn't, but in this one, he is. And the shape looks much better. Up goes Burns, up goes Goulding. Pantelis have been very good from the set-piece, Australia. Put a lot of emphasis on training, mixing up the moves. Curls into the face of the area. The attempted layoff there was for McAllister. Cansdall Sheriff. Uh, looking a lot more comfortable on the ball. Flag would be up now. Uh, Jay North down the right. Oh boy. That was the offside trap. I tell you, that one was close. 
I think uh, North may have actually been onside when that ball, no, maybe he wasn't. I'd like to see it right along the line. I'm just wondering if uh, Ricky Herbert down there got a closer view on that one. Yeah, well, uh, Lee Schoen, like Steve, he's really encouraging uh, both the Max McDonald and McAllister to uh, work the flanks. They're looking for balls to be played in behind the uh, Brazilian back three and work that space. He's not happy with the uh, the energy level of the two front runners. He feels at this stage they're not really putting pressure on the back three. Adriano deep ball in. Leonardo is to track back. And Ricky, how are you seeing the battle of the central midfield area? Well, Leo's obviously the key figure for the Australians to close down, but uh, he's getting plenty of attention. He had uh, one opportunity, as we all saw, to uh, develop something, but uh, very tight in there. Not a lot of ball coming out of there, but uh, the Australians obviously looking to play long. The Brazilians still looking to play their cultured football game. And they're not being allowed to really settle on the ball. Australia certainly has stepped up the pressure. Brain attempted switch to the middle. Searching for Pantelis. Bruno has provided good width and speed for that to start the opening three group matches. Well, Pantelis did a great job there for Australia. So did McDonald down this side. He actually held off his defender and played it back in as the ball went out the other side. Pantelis chased that player all the way and uh, managed to force the player back into the Brazilian half a good 30 yards. And tell us. Good work there by McAllister. Throw. Lovely touch. Lewis Brain. Almost found Jade North, who was wrestling free down that right hand flank. The late lunge from that man, Adriano. Short circuit of the move. And this is a fascinating contest when you look at it. Brazil started the match a little sharper, but Australia certainly have had their moments in the last 10 minutes. And that was waved on by the referee. Yeah, so I would have just like to have seen uh, Burns play that ball a little earlier to Madarski because he sort of ran 10 to 15 yards and played him in a rather tight area and put him in a wee bit of trouble. And uh, that's actually a sign of growing confidence. But I'm prepared to spend more time on the ball. Now, Kinos, who plays for Corinthians in Brazil, is Liz Scheinfeld. You know, asked to retreat by the referee. Take the throw in the correct position. And Australia and Brazil have some attacking options on the bench, but uh, certainly uh, we've learnt through experience, extra time periods and penalty shootouts. They won't play the cards too early. I'm sure they won't, but uh, there was McAllister just responding to the calls from Les Scheinflug. He did work hard, managed to get a foot in, and uh, the Brazilian player knocked it over the line for a corner, and this could be danger. McDonald, good dipping ball in, Golding! Great header by Marquinhos. Sent Golding crashing to the turf. Brave effort. Absolutely saw nothing but a ball that's probably three foot across. He threw everything for everything forward into it it's an in-swinging corner Goulding goes up clashes heads with Marquinhos I think and uh, but what a brave attempt from both players nice little corner knocked across great clearance top clearance from Marquinhos Aaron Goulding who scored that dramatic second minute goal in the semi-final just catching a knock to the side of his head but Ricky, you'd agree that was just a commitment and eyes for the ball there. Wonderful commitment there uh, by Goulding. Uh, good ball delivered into the box, and uh, that's what he's there for, trying to get his head on the ball. But uh, just at the other end, guys, Carlos Cesar Ramos, the uh, Brazilian coach, has been a little bit more active off the bench. He's, uh, he's not happy. His back three aren't linking up properly with the midfield, and he's looking for Leo, Eduardo, and certainly Walker to start picking up ball and getting the attack going a little bit better. Here's the number seven, Leo understandable because you can be as tidy as you like I and mean, have all the skills in the world but if you haven't got the ball you can't play and uh, it's all about being effective this game it's Carlos Cesar in the middle Madison drawing the foul Leo has waited for the run to come from Walker 
not a down by Shrove. Another player losing his footing. And that flank was Golding. And gave away the free kick. And that may be a booking here. The referee pulling both Eduardo and McDonald together and saying, we'll have less of that, let's get on with it. As Goulding makes his way back into the middle of the defence for Australia. And I know the players after that address from Liz Scheinfeld really topped up their mental preparation. They really felt they were the equal of Brazil in that opening round in Christchurch. I think the coach has made them believe they can lift a World Cup trophy. It's the first time Australia has ever contested a World Cup final. Yes, and it's uh, the little Aussie battlers against uh, the world's elite junior players in Brazil. And at the moment, the little Aussie battlers are more than all in their own. Searching ball in the middle there for Adriano, but Podarski positions himself so well as the last defender. Pantelis has got some nice touches and skill in that midfield area. Canstall Sheriff. McDonald gives away the foul. And when you consider this final, the population of Brazil and Australia, the same point is. Uh, prevalent for New Zealand, such a small population in football terms, and they're competing against the world's best. Indeed, and isn't it marvellous for Oceania that Australia have got there? Because uh, not only have they uh, got to play through their own region, they had to go and play home and away against Bahrain to make it to the finals, to beat them, and here they are in the final. There are odds at 100 to 1 before the tournament to lift the World Cup and now just Brazil remains as the obstacle. Here's Kakar. Loves shooting from range and unwinds and that flashes past the back post. The number 10 had Van Stratton stretching way to his right. And he is explosive. Nice skill as Kakot ducks past Pantelis. Right foot shot. Wide of the post. No real problems there for Van Stratton, but a lovely bit of skill. And uh, certainly had the crowd on their feet. This Brazilian crowd just absolutely loved it. McDonald tries to play Pantelis through. Nearly squeezed through the gap. Walker saved the day there for Brazil. So the feeling out period has ended and both teams now will be looking to get into a rhythm. Brazil not quite there. Well, they're not. And uh, you'd have to say that's good for Australia. Here's Kakar through the middle. Long searching ball by Cancel. Sheriff inside is McAllister. No support in the middle. He takes on Ricardo to get to the byline. Well, he did the right thing, didn't he? He actually got a ball played wide. He took a, took a bounce on this sort of greasy surface, I suppose. Pulled it down, looked up, nobody in the box. And he knew it was on him, and he actually uh, had a go at Ricardo and managed to win Australia a corner. A half an hour has surpassed in this final. And it's Australia nil, Brazil nil. The fans here at North Harbour Stadium are certainly on the edge of their seats. The World Cup up for grabs and a corner here for Australia. And Telos curls it back post. Vigno did well. No risk involved there with the fist out. Bruno, Anderson on the break. They have players forward. Switch of play was good. Kakar. Anderson has Leo out wide. In that direction it goes. It is the Brazilian number seven. Good sliding tackle there by Kensal Sheriff. Still it's Leo, surrounded by two defenders. Yeah, that's one thing that uh, Australia's got to be careful of with those speedy breaks. And 
Kaká broke. Le Leo went with him. And here they are now in the Australian front third. Eduardo. Here's a chance for Brazil. Adriano. Oh boy, you just can't switch off at all. Leonardo goes to ground, but uh, no whistle on play. It almost looked like the whole of the Australian defence was ball watching, looking square. They're all square. And Adriano, if he had a better touch, he was in. But uh, the Australian defence had just switched off there. Leonardo, Kaká. Nice step, but in the end, just lost the footing. McDonald. Just a midfield area, hint of handball there by Vatilis. Emerging Eduardo. Good clean tackle there by McAllister. Twist and foul. And that should be a portion on Eduardo, professional foul. McAllister's uh, really enjoyed himself out there. He's trying to get the ball down. He's certainly as big and strong as these, uh, these uh, Brazilian players. And at the moment, He's really enjoying his game. Not sure that the referee needed any encouragement from McAllister there to pull his card out. I think it was always on the uh, always on the referee's mind. First caution of the match. Hands to Sheriff. McAllister wins the ball in the air, but just blasts away from the 18-yard box. And Medino comes out. Brother of Z Elias, who's seen the Brazilian player. There's the foul. It's McAllister going down. And uh, that and a booking. Walker plays his club football with Ajax, the only Brazilian in Europe from this team. A strong challenge by Schro. That's what it's there for. He's the safety player in midfield, the one that sits in for them a wee bit. He's expected to win the ball. He's expected to shift it around and switch play. He does that well. Here he is again. He had his head up. He's looking. How's this? Beautiful. How's that, how's that for confidence? Right, one touch play by Australia. They stream down the right. Lewis Drain tries the shot to the deflection off Marquinhos. And it could have gone anywhere. In the end, it went straight to Rabinha. Indeed, and that's what Brain thought. He chanced his arm. He got in the shooting position. He made a great little run and said, I'm going to have a go here. Took a deflection, and the keeper saved well. But Brain is uh, having a tidy game as well. Working very hard in midfield, trying to shut Brazil down because they know that they've got the danger players in there. Eduardo. Walker, Leo, wonderful players. But at the moment, it's Australia pressing Brazil back. They're happy with this. We're getting calls from the sideline from Shamput saying, push up, push up. Well, it's been played in Brazil's half, and that's the reason why Carlos Azir is off the bench. Certainly not what he was expecting. Prepared for Bruno, he gets himself free on the right. But again, Mark Burns well positioned in the middle. Well, I'm sure they want uh, he wants more zip from his players. He's sort of like uh, maybe half a yard off the pace at the moment, and half a yard off the pace for Brazil means they're only mere mortals. And that's when these Aussie boys are getting the foot in, winning the ball, and uh, enjoying a good share of the ball. How's your Portuguese, Ricky? Well, uh, not the freshest at this stage, but uh, just a little news, guys, on the sideline. Uh, Lee Schoenflag again has been asking his front runners, McDonald and McAllister, for a lot more effort, and he's gone to the bench for Diorio. He's got his tracksuit off, and he's got him warming up. The reason I said that is because uh, Carlos is here. He's very animated on the touchline, the Brazilian coach. Well, the one who has to be the most worried at the moment is Cesar, because his players are just, they're just not, they're not in the pace of the game just yet. 
Uh, Australia will be more than happy with this. I'm surprised that Diorio's were uh, warming up this early because I would have thought that Les Shadford would have been happy with the way his team's going. Because they, uh, they really only need one chance. And uh, here goes Adriano down the left-hand side. Burns gets back. And Brain gets a foot in. And away by North. It's almost a uh, two-footed tackle. Free kick here for Brazil, Leonardo. Leo just lost the footing when he tried to step off Shrow. Pantelis just closed down quickly. Hakar and Walker surrounding him. The ball lifted into the 18 yard box. There's Adriano, his front running partners in the middle. Leonardo, but he's forced deep into the corner. Is that a foul? No, said the referee. Nice bit of skill, though. Pulled it back between his legs and flicked it out the back. And uh, was probably looking for a free kick. And the referee said, uh-uh, not on this occasion. Here he goes, turning. Pulls it back behind, flicks it through uh, Gilding's legs. The referee said, no free kick. Well, they're certainly playing for the whistle, Brazil. And it's a couple of times they've been waved on by Kiros Vasaris, the Greek referee. They are, and it's, it's interesting, the, the crowd seem to be turning. The Brazil supporters are quiet, they're sat down, they're saying nothing. The coach is up, he's not happy. And uh, the crowd here at Albany Stadium seem to be turning and supporting Australia at the moment. Here's Leo, the playmaker, lovely switch of play to Walker. Slow motion build up. The car was attempted to be paid through. Uh, fouls. And number five, Vadaski. And there's Jurgen Klinsmann and Franz Beckenbauer. Two of the greats of the game here for the German 2006 World Cup bid. There's Sir Bobby Charlton as well. Had the pleasure of speaking to all three gentlemen yesterday and certainly very competitive off the park as well as on. They want their respective countries to earn the right to host that 2006 World Cup. Well, uh, Bobby Charlton very kindly took part in a live video link-up from the UK to here in New Zealand. as part of a uh, celebration of soccer dinner held by the Centre Circle in Christchurch. And he, he had the crowd absolutely spellbound, hanging on to every word that he said. They loved it. Charlie Dempsey, and that's the man they're chasing for the vote. One of the FIFA delegates who will decide the fate of the host nation for 2006. Well, the last call that I heard was, uh, it was on the news, of course, that uh, Charles would like both England and Germany to put a joint bid in, and I can't imagine that being the case. Sliced out. And there is Anderson, who was in big danger of missing this match. Les Scheinfeld must sense that Australia can break through. They certainly have Brazil worked out tactically at the moment. So long as they keep things tight, don't make mistakes, they're in with a shout. As we know that Brazil can spark into action very, very quickly. So five minutes of regular time remaining in the first half of this World Championship final. And who'd be a coach? Both of them have been off the bench, shouting instructions, sometimes cajoling, sometimes chastising. Probably wanted to pick a ball themselves. Anderson closed down by Lewis Brain, and I'm sure. Slows Scheinfeld. He's using every inch of that area. I'm sure, even senior world championships, FIFA would love the drama to be repeated in Japan and South Korea for 2002. And that's a free kick to Brazil in a very dangerous area. Well, Adriana went down very easy there. Wonderful crowd. Have a look at this. 
you've not seen anything like it in New Zealand for probably 20 years. This tournament has done wonderful things for the game here. New the New Zealand sporting public love wonderful entertainment and international events. And this one's been magnificent. Eduardo will take the free kick. Square he goes. Walker. The car. Golding closes him down well the tackle. Very strong work and at the back of Scott McDonald. For Childers this for Brazil. Adriano turns. Into the area he goes. Flip back by Pantelis. So now pressure at the back for Australia, but it's relieved here. Jade North. Lack of understanding there by the Brazilians. And we talk about that rhythm. And it's not quite there for the South Americans. The reigning and the 17 world champions. Crowd keeping that Mexican wave going. They're thoroughly enjoying the day. Not long left in this half. And it's still locked up, nil all. Shrove wins the ball in the air. McAllister has been influential. All tournament. He's played his part, Dylan McAllister. Eduardo hasn't fouled, but uh, a touch with the hand. Here's the free kick in the end, a late whistle. Well, it's very much a, a holding pattern here, Ricky Herbert. Yeah, very much so. We're going to the back end now, just uh, two or three minutes to go. Liz wants the side just to be a little bit patient now. He's well happy. He's uh, getting a smile on his face. He's happy with his front runner's work and uh, just encouraging them to keep on pushing forward, keep the pressure on. Uh, they've got Brazil having to change their pattern of play, and that's what he's looking for. It's earlier than goalkeeper Rubinho was fully stretched as McDonald bared down. He's had a fairly tough time in the first half, but not from McAllister. Well, if you go in like this at half time, Le Schaefer is going to say, Well done, great. It's looking good for us. The longer it goes, the better it is. And uh, I'd imagine the Brazilian players are going to get the biggest rev up they've had. And they, uh, they do need it, I think. Walker now playing that right-handed flanking roll. Lovely back heel by Kaká for his captain. Here's a chance for Brazil. Walker surrounded by two defenders. Was he taken down in the area? Another player goes down, waved on by the referee. It was Bruno. Straight ahead to be clean in these challenges. Well, there was panic back there then as Walker went forward. And still not finished. Good work here by McDonald. It's a body there with Kakar. And that was a foul by McDonald. Stunts her up. I think you'll find there'll be a booking here for the Australian number 11. It was a rash challenge. He's, he's had needle with him all day, Scott McDonald. A couple of times he's gone in late. And it's not the time to do it. Well, he looks a little firework. A strong guy. And uh, that was certainly uh, late and high. And uh, he deserved a booking there. Part of the FIFA message is fair play. You probably see it on the signs around the ground. And uh, in general terms, this tournament's been played in a great spirit. Well, considering Brazil and there's a big portion of the crowd, they were very animated. The opening whistle, not so much so now, as the car is taken from the pitch. And after 45 minutes, it's Australian nil, Brazil nil. Free kick to Leo. Second bite at this one, but Lewis Brain just rushes in. Leo steps around, two players still going. Adriano to the near post, and a chance here for Leonardo. But Wayne Schroe with the clearance. What a great run from Leo. He went by four players, played it wide. 
The ball was played back into the danger area and cleared. And Australia still haven't really cleared the lines yet. Brazil is sort of dominating these past two or three minutes. They're getting a lot of ball. Here's Walker. Not prepared to give it away. Doesn't want to chance it. Doesn't want to risk it. Leo. It's really slow Walker. motion stuff in the, the middle of the park for Brazil. As there's, there's a tight foul. No, said the referee. Advantage was played. Leonardo went down. Green referee is certainly really keeping the play quite open. The car back on the pitch for Brazil. Eduardo, perhaps their last chance, and that was a clear free kick. Quickly taken. Has to be retaken. So seconds away from the half-time whistle. Leo chips for Kaká. Here's Anderson joining in. Cannons off Wayne Schroe. Well, Australia's under a bit of pressure here. And uh, Brazil has sort of been camped down here for the last five minutes. It's very important from Australia's point of view now that they go in without conceding a goal. Free kick at the back for the Joeys. Captain Nicole. Mark Burns. Goal going out from the bench. Take your time. Push up. Burns takes his time. Australia push up. And he knocks it long, hoping to clear his lines. One by Leo. The pressure still not over. Golding unsighted momentarily. Just over the door there for Leonardo. And Golding very strong in that challenge. Canstall Sheriff searching ball out of the danger zone. Marquinhos just happy to see the ball roll out for a Brazilian goal kick. He's done a pretty good job. Kiros Vassaris. An intensive looking Brazilian bench. Can tell us with the flick. Curiously found Wayne Schroe lobs the ball for Cansdale Sheriff. Takes on number two for Brazil. Bruno. And that is half time. No, free kick. The bench of Brazil thought uh, the second whistle was imminent. I think uh, Brazil can certainly expect that at every bump ball there's going to be an Australian tackling or challenging. And uh, it's in the nature of the people. They uh, won't give up. Battle right to the end. It's certainly Brazil have been frustrated by Australia's go slow tactics. The close checking, good shape at the back. I think everybody's uh, anticipated Brazil being the, uh, the top side here, and uh, Australia had a great half. They certainly have after Brazil started very, very smartly in this final. A wink from the referee. And it's the end of 45 minutes. It's been a fascinating opening half to this final. And half time here at North Harbour Stadium. Australia nil, Brazil nil. And there you have it after the first 45 minutes, nil, nil. Australia, Brazil, 45 minutes left. We'll be back with all the halftime happening after we pay some bills. We could be in for, for a very good second half. Second 45 minutes underway. important 45 minutes of these young men's life. Lucas Pantelis has forced his way into this starting lineup for Australia. Captain Walker. Leo has some space. Goes down there by Lewis Brain. Here's Eduardo joining in. 
Anderson. The two front runners have been well covered, Adriano and Leonardo. A lot of credit must go to Burns, Golding and Madarski at the back. Well, you won't get any change out of those boys. They're very strong, very tough, and uh, so far have been more than adequate, more, more than a match for the Brazil boys up front. It's a game that uh, you don't want to want to make a mistake because it's likely you'll remember it for the rest of your life. Maybe costly. The sixth time Australia has been past the quarterfinals. First time into a final at any level. And that's the name of the game, Steve. A goal. Has not happened in the match so far. Madarski. Foul there on Mark Burns, the Australian captain. A section of the Brazilian flair and colour. Marquinhos, sweeper for Brazil. Switching play. Brazil come down this right hand side. Bruno with a searching run, lovely ball off to Kaká. Lost his footing there. Here's Leonardo. His first touch just got away from him. It's cleared in desperation by Lucas Pantelis. Very sharp on the turn, the number 16. And this match has certainly been played at close quarters. Been very disciplined in the tackle. They played the touchline, they played the percentages. And Ricky, can they maintain the pressure in midfield Australia? Because that really is the key, isn't it? Well, that's what I think Lee Sean Frank will be looking for, guys. The uh, the wind has returned slightly, the rain has come back. We've got a little bit of drizzle here, and uh, the Australians have come out. They've started strongly again in the second half, but the midfield is the key factor for them. Leo, Eduardo, and certainly uh, Walker, the captain for Brazil, certainly need lots of attention in the early stages of, of this match. The Joeys have really uh, maintained the pressure so far. The rain is beginning to tumble down. And there's just a wee bit of argy bargy in the middle there between Leo and Schroep off the ball. Both were pushing a bit. The first challenge went in, and Leo threw an elbow on Schroep. Hence the free kick for Australia. Podarski, the central ball, is now wide for Jade North. Early ball in. Well dealt with by the Brazilian defence. This is where concentration, a number of players beginning to slip, service becoming increasingly sodden. This, uh, what is now fairly steady rain will make uh, conditions a little bit more difficult. Well, it does, and if you're in the back, it's dangerous, and uh, they must be very careful now because we've seen not only in this game but in the, the early game players slipping. Here's Anderson, the deflection off Leonardo. I'm not sure if this will be a factor, Ricky, but the surface at Christchurch at QE2 where Australia has played, you'll see the replay in the shot there by Anderson. A little bit firmer, and I think North Harbour, this stadium, a little softer underfoot. Well, this rain is certainly making it slippery for all the players out there, uh, David, but uh, the Australians still looking to play a pressing game. Uh, my only concern is if they can keep up this pressure for 90 minutes, the front runners again of McAllister and McDonald still have to work hard. Lee Scheinflug may have to go to the bench in the, in the last 10 to 15 minutes to maintain that pressure, but I don't see a lot in this. One goal may be the difference. He's got some shock value on the bench too. Lee Scheinflug, Joe Diorio. Scored that wonderful volley against Qatar in the quarterfinals. Bruno down the right. Inviting Qatar in. Too much weight on the pass. The 50 minute mark. It's Australia nil, Brazil nil. In this World Championship final. And there's the umbrellas up. Really steady rain now falling. Nothing like 
semi-final between Brazil and Ghana Wednesday night. Amazing to see that the, the rain did not dampen the, the fans' enthusiasm. Really, Auckland and New Zealand have embraced these young men. Yes, it's been a great turnout by the crowd. And I uh, popped out at half-time. And there was a wonderful carnival atmosphere just outside. Hacky sacks were going, people playing keepy up his skilled games. And thoroughly enjoying the atmosphere. Donald had a free shot at the near post. Ever so close, he knew the opportunity was there. Well, he's only a wee fella, and it wouldn't come down fast enough. Pantelis gets the nick on, and uh, Eduardo was looking to put a foot up too. McDonald, he just wouldn't come down fast enough for him, and he knocked it wide. The goalkeepers will be tested as the rain falls. Always very dicey. The men protecting goal. Shots from long range fired in. And the complexion of the game should change. There's Carlos Cesare, second from the left. The foul picked out. An elbow, said the referee. A free kick to Australia. McAllister has been very strong in those aerial challenges. Yes, he has, and I think Burns will look to go forward here. Goulding as well, probably. That's the uh, height of the Australian team. They're looking to swing the ball into the back post. Up goes McAllister. Pantelis now on the ball again. Surrounded by blue shirts and Eduardo joins in well. Switch on in the middle, here's a chance for Brazil. And Adriano's first touch was clumsy. Just took it away from himself and in the path of the defender as Les Scheinfeld wouldn't be feeling the rain. Adriano has been a little bit bluffed in the back by Australia. Leonardo has looked a much more dangerous striker. Well, interestingly, Madarski's had very little to do in this game and that's probably uh, because he's two central defenders have snuffed out nearly everything that Brazil have produced and in goes Burns again, clears up again and uh, they would be very comfortable at the moment I'd say Leo needs to get involved more, Eduardo Walker switches on down the right they go more central, here's Leonardo again the sliding challenge well timed there by Burns Australia is so confident in the back Combining numbers. Hansdall Sheriff searching ball in. Here's McAllister. Another yard would have been interesting. It was. It was uh, not a bad ball from Hansdall Sheriff. Just picked up a bit of pace as it hit the deck. And Rubino comfortably dealt with it. It's building, challenging, forcing Leonardo square, not allowing him to turn. Leo, diagonal ball to the corner of the area. And there's a young fan, perhaps a future Brazilian star. And here's Canston Sheriff knocking that ball long. She just picks up a wee bit of pace. Rubino collects nice and easy. Joe Diorio, so the move is there. A striker for a midfielder. I think you'll find that expect Joe Diorio to go into midfield. Callister will drop back into that role, so it's a definite second-half shape for Australia, Steve. It is, and they've done this before in other games. Brought Diorio on. He's a tidy footballer, a lot of skill in the tight area. And on a surface like this, it might just pay dividends for them. Here's McDonald, free down the left. Takes on Marquinhos, gets to the byline. Beautiful cutback. Drain at the far post. Jade North will rebuild for Australia. Anderson's a very good defender. North turns it to the near post, but no Australian shirt there. And how do you see this move, Ricky Herbert? Well, the Oreo has been brought on. He's an, uh, a proven goal scorer, guys. McAllister, I feel, he's been put back into the middle of midfield. He's a little bit stronger, a little bit taller. He's, he's to sit in there to, to deal with Leo or Eduardo. 
different shape for Australia now in this midfield area. Castle will run out the 90 minutes. Joe Diorio, can he extract some brilliance? Well, I'm sure he can. And uh, the shapes of the side, I don't think, will change a great deal. McAllister, just, as Ricky said, will just drop back in and play the role that Pantelis has uh, been playing for the first half. But Diorio's just got that wee bit of imagination, that wee bit of skill. He's the sort of... Uh, He's the one with that little bit of imagination that can actually change a game in a flash. Jay North, Jay from Queensland, Brisbane Strikers. And speaking to Frank Farina, the senior Australian coach before the match, the player that's impressed him the most has been Mark Burns, which I know his defensive efforts have certainly been here in the top of your list, Steve. Yes, he's been uh, very strong. And uh, he's had another good game today. I think he's the sort of player that you can rely on, game in, game out, nothing flash, but he does his job and uh, really is a solid player. And still Sheriff. And speaking to those big three yesterday, Beckenbauer, Klinsman and Bobby Charlton. So Bobby, it's quite interesting to note that their feelings on these championships have never seen standard like this at under-17 level. Even Jürgen Klinsmann, who's a, a recent exit from the international scene, was quite surprised by the skills on display. Well, they must love it here in New Zealand, which is not necessarily a football country. More known for its rugby players. A wonderful tournament we've had so far. With, uh, and there is Klinsmann, Beckenbauer, two of the greatest German players ever. Some may say, in fact, Beckenbauer could be their choice as the best player. There's Ravigno rushing out. The Oreo is very nippy. Tried to put the pressure on the Brazilian goalkeeper. Dusky. Second attempt now with a head up. Kakar. Contest in the air. Here's a chance for Eduardo. Tries to hit the volley. Come off the defender. Anderson. Nice skills. And Leo is forced to shoot from long range. Well, he's unpredictable. There's no question about that. Indeed, and I think uh, when Ricky and I were talking about him at half time, we really think this player can go a long way. He's got great skills, great physique. Looks the athlete, and uh, there's the shots. Eight to Brazil, one to Australia, but it doesn't matter. The score is nil all. That's what counts. The longer this game goes, the more Australia will be happy. And who knows if they nick one, they could finish up the under-17 world champs. Well, I'll stand to be corrected, but every match I've seen that stat come up for Australia, it has always been in the opponent's favour. Australia have made the best of scan opportunities and that has been their game strong defense an attack that converts here's leonardo as he fouled the edge of the area no said the referee the greek referee has been very firm and right on the spot and these players know that they'll have to earn their free kicks Shrey, strong on the challenge. Walker. Eduardo, Leo, keeps the one-two play. Well, Red by Madarski, though, and it needed to be because it was a tight little move going on through midfield. I think they will cut here blocking. from Bruno. There was a great deal in that one, really. Probably uh, McDonald making a wee bit more of that one than there was. Just an arm across the face, or more of a hand across the face. But it does relieve the pressure from Australia. As Sousa goes on, the sub. For Adriano. So some height, much difference in shape because they're both big strikers. Scott McDonald is a very tough customer. They have been niggling all day, those two, Bruno and Scott McDonald. The 
yellow card for the Brazilian defender. Schroe. Lovely little run here by Kansdor Sheriff. The sliding ball skews wide. It was a great free kick in by Madarski down the left-hand side to Schroe. He held it well, and, and Kansdor Sheriff went for a run, and uh, fortunately knocks his cross out. Souza was involved in some interesting moments with his teammates earlier in the tournament. And since he hasn't started, Brazil have looked a different proposition with Adriano and Leonardo. There's a big one way traffic today, though. The car. Eduardo's been outstanding in midfield. Anderson makes a searching run down the left. The ball's skidding out of play. Scott McDonald back on. Ricky Herbert, you mentioned Australia's ability to run out the 90 minutes, pressurise the Brazilian playmakers. Does it look like it's subsiding now? Now Australia still doing very, very well, David. I mean, the pressure's still there. They're prepared to push players forward. Delivery just coming down the left-hand side just needs to be attended to a wee bit. The cross is going into the box. They're going behind. And uh, lots of runs are coming from midfield now from McAllister and certainly from McDonald. If we can get that delivery a little bit better, the chances could be converted into goals. Just on Souza, his introduction, the coach Carlos was uh, really laying down the law to this player before he came on the park. Uh, one would wonder that uh, perhaps the off-field antics of him, um, he's being reminded of that, and now is his opportunity to come on and do something for the Brazilian attack. Well, he's very much the individual, Souza. came to this tournament with enormous wraps. Brian hasn't delivered as yet. Gets his chance in a final. Here he is, a nice touch on for Walker. Here's the Brazilian number nine, but Nadarski is very quickly in. He reads the play so well. Kakar. Run to a skill, it's just to lift the ball to his advantage. Bruno, the outside of the foot. Again, the Australian defender's well positioned. Now playing in that midfield role. Gives the ball up to Walker. Souza back to his captain. Gets free from the challenge. Here's Leo. A long range shot. The second attempt from well outside the area. It was worth the goal. It was a nice little move across the park. And there's that man Leo again. Takes it on the outside of his right foot. Leaning back. But uh, it's high, wide, and handsome, as they say. is a Dow defensive final. Brazil will have to extract something to break down the Australian defence. Very solid. And I've noticed, Ricky, their normal 4-4-2 combination. Brazil, they love getting their wing backs forward. It's just not really happening for them. No, both sides, certainly with Bruno and Anderson, have had limited opportunities to get uh, further forward into the attacking third, but uh, that's all credit to the Australians. They've filled those positions very, very well defensively. The unit is staying very, very strong. They're moving forward together and moving back together. They're making it difficult for Brazil to play through. And uh, that just shows in that ball there. There was nothing on. They had to play something. It was aimed at Sousa, but too long and out for a goal kick to Australia. But it really is up to Brazil. They're the favourites here. In fact, they've been the red hot favourite to take this out. So I think Australia will be well pleased with the performance so far. One goal, just good nick it. It's looking more like one will settle this game, Ricky. Very much so, Steve. Uh, both sets of players at this stage have been sent out to warm up. I think uh, both managements feel at this stage that there may have to be the introduction of further uh, substitutions just to uh, keep the pressure going. But for me, Australia, if they can keep this uh, pressure going forward, they're certainly uh, making the Brazilians having to, uh, to rethink. But uh, certainly with Leo, Eduardo and Walker, who knows what could happen from that trio. And still Sheriff getting free. Well, the other thing I'm thinking about, Ricky, is with this... Uh Diorio working really hard, twisting and turning, keeping the ball. Switching it square to north, and it gets cut out. I'm just wondering, with this wonderful performance from Australia, will it have any effect on what uh, FIFA do with Oceania in terms of qualification for this and other tournaments in future? 
Well, Steve, this has certainly got to strengthen uh, what everybody is hoping for down here is to uh, perhaps have a look at 2010 for a World Cup campaign for Australia and New Zealand. And uh, the Australian under-17s are certainly doing their part in uh, saying football down here is in good heart. North is fouled down the right. As he looked, he knocked the ball wide a bit. Wado, Ed Wado ran across. I think he even got his elbow up. Caught North. So it's a free kick to Australia, and it's in a dangerous position. And it's in these sort of instances now. Well, he really just ran across him, got his arm across. North wasn't going to get there, so down he went. It is a free kick to Australia. And it's from these sort of situations that Australia can win the game. We've got good height and good imagination from the dead ball situations. Australia, this is a place a lot of emphasis on free kicks set pieces in training ball swung in by Cancel Sheriff and nicked over the bar the near post there was McDonald and it's nicked on by a Brazilian player and if you're Australian you won't care who scores so long as it goes in the Brazilian net up goes Eduardo gets a nick on Rubino and it just flies over the top he's the same one and Eduardo just getting a little nick and that could have finished up right in the top corner corner to be taken by Cansdale Sheriff. Pressure on the Brazilian defence. Near post coming out was Rubinho. And the shot hit by McDonald. Cannon into a defender. Schroe. Such a strong worker for Australia. The square ball was poor. And perhaps a Brazilian break here. It's Leo. Lovely inviting ball for Bruno. He's streaming down the right. Leonardo in the middle, and again Nadarski, the big six foot two defender, blocks the ball out. First one, Stratton calling out instructions to his defenders, keep it tight, get it away. Let's keep it going, boys. All those sort of calls will be going out. And just the pressure showing on Bruno. And these players such a young age have physically and mentally gone through so much in the last two and a half three weeks and just add to that a semi-final of absolute drama field action two semi-finals extra time and penalty shootouts can you believe it and it has been such a dramatic world championship here in new zealand yes and this sort of tournament actually provides experience for players that money can't buy I know some pro clubs were uh, more than happy for the players to come here just to gain the experience at this level. And, uh, I'm sure they've got their money's worth. It's Carlos Cesare just asking for that effort and hopefully looking to unlock the midfield area. Leo in the middle of Souza. He won't outpace Wadarski as Van Stratton rushed out. And Van Stratton is an expert at coming off his line. He really shows a good judgment in that area. He did very well indeed there because it was a top ball through Leo. It just picked up a bit of pace again with the wet surface. Van Stratton ran it well. The wide players are tucking in. It looks a very congested midfield for both teams, and that won't worry Australia as McDonald went to ground. Well, if that's the case, you've actually got to say well done Australia because that's what they'll be wanting to do. They won't want the Brazilian boys to have any time and space to play. They want to crack them up, keep it tight, and break like this. Unlucky. That is a and free kick. A foul on McAllister. And McAllister knew straight away. Yellow card for Kaka. About 30 yards out. Here's McAllister on a little break. Kaka pulling him back. Grabbed his shirt, made it, made it awkward for uh, McAllister, and the referee spotted it and said it's a free kick. And that's a free kick of frustration for Kaká, and it is a diagonal wall play from Lewis Brain. Cancel Sheriff, non-preferred side, chips in, Wayne Schro well positioned. Also there was Leo. Scores locked up, nil all. 20 minutes to go. Normal time. Extra time being played after that. Well, the 
fans are on the edge of their seats. It hasn't been spectacular, but it has been enthralling. This final, Australia match blows with Brazil. Powerhouse of World Football, four senior world championships. There's another way though, Dave, in cup finals. Sometimes things are tight. Players are uh, afraid to sort of express themselves, don't want to make a mistake. And things can be played very, very tightly. And, uh, and, and so there's no slip ups at the bike. It's uh, really uh, been rather a tight game. Here's Schro. And they'll fancy themselves if. And I'm looking way ahead here if they ever get to a, a penalty shootout situation because they've practiced and practiced that at training. And this is a lovely ball and a chance for Leonardo for Brazil. Souza in the middle. Patiently play back. Anderson whips it in. Golding well positioned. And again, Brazil denied. And there's some theatrics, and this time it's paid off. And went down. So we've got the Brazilian crowd. North getting the foot in here. That was more like uh, North had the ball and probably handball from Anderson there. But this is one of those dangerous positions that Brazilian players love. We've seen many a goal score from this sort of distance. Whether these young fellows have got the pace and the power to make it count, we're yet to see. About 30 yards out on the angle. Kaká lining up. Eduardo, Ricardo. They take inspiration from Roberto Carlos. Eduardo turns it around and it flashes past the near post. I think Van Stratton had it well covered. It was superbly struck. Short free kick lined up for Eduardo. In fact, it was a rolling ball. He didn't quite stop it. And uh, that probably put Eduardo off and he knocked the ball wide. Van Stratton crawling to his defense. Get tighter. Don't let it go through the wall. There's a number of shots, 10 to Australia, two, uh, 10 to Brazil, 2 to Australia. Uh, but uh, it doesn't matter, the score is nil all. And still share of the Leeds player, the Leeds teammate, probably Groves on the bench. Just out of the side by Lucas Pantelis. So there's great depth in this Australian squad. Leo still going. We get a second by here, the number seven, and a ball in. And was that handball suspiciously close on Madaski? It may have been, but there was no intent there. It was a great little run by Leo down the right hand side. He got a lucky bounce and uh, it did look like it hit, clipped uh, Madaski. Went out for a corner. The corner statistic in the match. And goes up by Anderson. Makinos will be a factor here. Near post took a deflection of McDonald, so another corner. And Stratton bar the opening match against Brazil when it's really his only mistake of the whole tournament. He let Marquinhos in. And since then he has been rock solid in the Australian goal. There's a lot of movement in the box. Anderson to the back post this time wide by Wayne Shrow, so no risk being taken by the Australian players. And that was a great corner too, right to the back stick. The keeper was uh, nowhere to be seen. And Australia struggling to clear it. They did, it's gone up for a corner on, this, on the far side. And he's still under more pressure. Eduardo this time gets his chance. Really getting into it now. Here at North Harbour Stadium. A lot of movement in the penalty area. As number 15 comes on for Wellington. For Kaká. Ball swung to the back post. Chance here for Walker. He had a yard to the side of his opposite captain in Mark Burns. But it was another ball, great ball in swinging corner to the back post. There was nobody there, unfortunately, for Brazil. Burns was stretching, he couldn't get there, and uh, that man Walker just knocked it wide of the post. Great 
shot there. What lay ahead for Walker. That's all that's needed. A yard of space for any of these players, and they can make themselves a hero. The referee left to sort this out. Ozzy saying, I want it there. Sousa saying, back through at the back. I think this great referee has been very good. Cross the Saras. Salonica. Wellington got composed, and uh, have you seen his performance, Ricky? Yeah, he's done an excellent job, guys. Uh, just Wellington's just come on the uh, off the substitutes uh, bench for Brazil. He's taken up more of a defensive role, and uh, he's given instructions for Eduardo and Leo to push further forward to give Leonardo and Souza some more support. So a different shape, Wellington sitting back. Walker's been the one that's probably sat in a wee bit more than the others. And uh, he's been asked to go forward a bit. And chance his arm further upfield. Well, Brazil cannot break the shackles of Australia. Australia's really felt that 2 1 victory to Brazil in the opening group match was an injustice. A couple of mistakes really cost them dearly. Many experts feel that Brazil have improved a lot since that performance. But Australia again performing better than expectations. Yes, they are. And, uh, they've got better as the games have gone on, and they're holding Brazil well here. It's been a difficult game at times for them. But, uh, got a nice move. Going down the right inside as Diora trips over the ball and then Guardo cuts it out. Leonardo. And here's a chance for Brazil. Takes on two defenders. And gets to the byline, but the ball rolls out. So the pressure again on the number 16 told the story. Two defenders running with the Brazilian striker. It's a great little run into the left-hand side of the box, but he just overruns it. One touch too many. Rolls out for a goal kick, Van Stratton takes it, knocks it long. Eduardo wins it. And Madarski clears it. Here's the Oreo. Plays his club football with Werder Bremen. He's carried a hip injury and a bit of a groin strain. It's not allowed him to be considered for a starting berth. His team, Souza, on the turn. And a neat one as well. Schroeder. I don't know if it's had anything to do with the lapse of Sousa coming on because Henriana didn't do much in the first half. But uh, certainly, Brazil have had more of the ball in this half. And Australia are going to have to be very careful. Looking more dangerous now, Brazil. Leo plays Sousa through, Spike stays down. Great challenge by Van Strat. The Australian defenders looked up to the linesman, but the flag stayed down. And Sousa almost played through. There was a chance of that man, Van Stratton, clean through here, Sousa. Van Stratton out, brave, stretched, full stretch, and just managed to get something on it. And that was a wonderful stop. Another moment of pressure soaked up in the back by Australia, and how much can they take? That is the question. Well, it's building up, isn't it? Given away down the left hand side. There's been very little happening up front for them. Here's Leo, head up. Look, he's running with the ball. Little great ball inside. Releases Sousa. The keeper came out bravely with a great stop. And that's one of those skills that Leo has, Ricky. That little reverse pass. He's got great vision. And uh, I know that you've got great wraps on him. With the 80th minute, 10 to go. He's great, Steve. He's uh, in this more uh, attacking position. He's uh, providing Sousa a lovely little ball, as we've seen just uh, a couple of minutes ago. And I'm sure the coaching staff will be del delighted that he's getting himself a goal. For me, he's the key for Brazil winning the game. That was just such a delightful ball by that man, the number seven. Well, everybody's up now. Everyone back for Australia. Um, virtually everybody within about 30 yards, excluding the goalkeeper from the Brazilian side. They know the chance. 
Henderson. Anything can happen from the corner. It's an in swing in corner on the left left footed corner. Schroe jumps, Madarski jumps. Eduardo from long range. Let's fly. And again, the, tight, the screws tightened at the back for Australia. And a lot more composed as Carlos is there. Well, he knows his team's getting more of a share of the ball this half, and uh, they're playing with a bit more conviction. I just get the feeling the longer this is going now that uh, you know something, something could crack at the back for Australia. There's not long to go. And we'll head off into uh, extra time. He stays locked up. Eduardo tries to play Anderson down the line. Marked there by Jade North. There's Les Scheinfeld. He gives a lung. Well, his lungs are fair working out in every match. The helm of Australian teams for over 20 years, and he bows out to these championships. Well, he would have kicked every ball, he's encouraged his team, cajoled them. He knows there's not long to go. He's asking for a bit more from them. Can the dream come true for him? Steve, this is a real period of play now where I'm sure Les won't want his players to sit back. He, they need to keep the pressure on. We saw in the last uh, five minutes of the first half that uh, Brazil, given the ball, that's certainly dangerous. Walker emerging. Lewis Brain has been influential in midfield. Great interception here by Wellington, who's away. With pace two, Tace who's it through. Here's a chance for Brazil. And again, Van Strat. What great anticipation by the Australian goalkeeper. Oh, boy. Is that part of the match material or what? What a great stop. Here goes Wellington through. Plays the ball through for Sousa. Lee Sean like guys, is right off the bench. He's not happy with McAllister. He finds now that uh, Leo is getting too much room in the middle of the park. The balls are getting put through, and Walker. He's off the bench. He wants that midfield tightened up. Indeed, and that was a wonderfully brave effort again from that man, Van Stratton. Served his team, keeps the minute. And at the moment, it's a free kick to Australia. They've got a chance to release the pressure and knock a ball into the Brazilian box. 1-1 in, and Marquinhos meets it strongly with a header. Here's Eduardo. And Brazil are growing in confidence. You can just sense that Leonardo plays it of Golding for the Brazilian throw. But you can. The midfield's linking well now with Sousa. He's made quite a difference for them up front. Signaling perhaps a foul throw. Giorgio. Australia looks stunned for the moment. Leonardo. A loose one for McAllister. He now finds north of some space, but uh, deep in their own half. They're finding it difficult to get out of this half at the moment. Brazil win it again. Eduardo advancing. McDonald chasing him back. Sousa turns. Leo. Anderson, long range shot, the bounce, and it wasn't far away from that toast. In the end, it wasn't a deflection, I don't think, from Van Stratton. He's a bit disoriented momentarily. A left foot shot from Anderson, and it picks up a wee bit of pace again off that greasy surface. I think Van Stratton had it covered, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. There's Schoenfeld's comments, Kansas the Sheriff. He's telling them, tuck in, did you catch that, Ricky? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that, guys. I think he was just telling him to tuck in and make it difficult for the midfield to play as Leo is booked. So the fourth booking for Brazil. Well, he did challenge uh, McAllister here. He went up with his arm. I think he actually, yeah, he tried to actually punch him there. And uh, that's certainly not part of the fair play. Uh, Message that FIFA want. Leo got booked, rightly so. Australia free kick. Pressure momentarily eased on the Jarrys. Five minutes to go. Nil all. This is really decision time now, guys. Are Australia going to push forward or are they happy to uh, run the clock down? There's only uh, just on four odd minutes to go now and take Brazil into extra time and golden goals. 
And they're sitting back, it looks like it, Australia. It's time for the final whistle for 90 minutes anyway. Well, that may be the tactic, Ricky, because uh, one goal in uh, normal time means Brazil always have a chance of coming back. But in extra time, she's all over. First goal, that's it, you're the winner. Brazilian fans in front of us are really off their seats just behind that man, the Schoenfeld. Yes, they're trying to lift the team. Guado, nice skill, Bruno misses it. Castle Sheriff just happy to knock it forward. Marquinhos at the back for Brazil. Now patiently, Bill Wellington has got some good pace, so a good move off the bench. Carlos is out. Nice work here by Bruno. The space now for the Brazilian midfielders. Eduardo lobs for Souza. Surrounded by three defenders. Walker, switch of players on. Anderson gets himself free down the left. Leo with a long range shot. Doesn't mind firing them. Pulling back the trigger as uh, the fans are really enjoying the action. North Harbour Stadium. This one. There's Leo leaning back. Hits it. Powerful guy. Misses on that occasion, but Australia do need to tighten things up across the middle of the park because at the moment the ball watching. Brazil are playing at will, and that's not good for them. Three minutes of normal time remaining in this final. He's heading for extra time. Two 15-minute periods will be played. The golden goal rule applies. The first team to score will win if it gets to extra time. There's still a deadlock. Penalties will decide this World Championship final. Both Diorio and McDonald are coming off. Leonardo joined them very quickly. So a bit flat-footed, the midfield of Australia. Well, it's not only that, it's the, the, the two up front, McDonald and Diorio, really you're making runs coming off the back four of Brazil and just tightening things up again, and they really need to be making runs wider and further forward. So consequently, every time they receive a ball, they're playing it back into midfield. And as the Brazilian confidence grows, the little dinks and the sideway balls, the touch just improves, I think. They really do fuel themselves on confidence. Free kick quickly taken. Bruno takes on Cancel Sheriff. The turn of pace by the Brazilian number two. Cuts to the near post. Well defended by Mark Burns. They really are looking to find the crack in the Australian defence. Stratton's been outstanding in goal. Certainly now, with just over a minute to go, Australia more than happy to see it go into extra time. But Stratton's had a top game, man of the match maybe. He's pulled off some wonderful saves, very brave. A blue wave perhaps again in midfield, Leo, closed down by Wayne Schroe. McDonald was played there. Jake North. Drain has been quieter in the second half. There's Jake North, who's an influential player on that right wing. Set up many of Australia's attacking moves in this tournament. Souza. Challenge from Burns and it needed it. Chest Walker wide. Wellington just looking to size things up. There's Leonardo win. Sousa. And the turn there by Leo. Anderson. He's got, he's got great skills, Leo, hasn't he? Was he fouled? Yes, he was, said the referee. So we have played 90 minutes in this final. with a free kick. Can Australia keep them out? The pressure's mounting. Eduardo chips to the back post. 
was searching for Marquinhos. It's an easy one in the end for Jess Van Stratton. Yeah, not a problem for Van Stratton though. Meat and drink, he loves those. Marquinhos, Souza. Surrounded by two green shirts. Burns had a high boot, but play waved on by the referee. Leonardo heads to space. Jade North in his own half. And that flank duel between he and Anderson has been quite fascinating. Perhaps Anderson has had the better second half. Just getting forward. Eduardo with some space. And the shot was an awkward one. Just bobbled up for Van Stratton. As Carlos Cesare will have to regroup his group for this extra time period. And there's Scheinfeld. Wouldn't be totally unhappy with the result. Well, I think it's magnificent, really, because uh, Brazil are the favourites. They've had a lot of ball, especially in the second half. Australia's hung on grimly. And it looks like they're taking this game into extra time. It's been a difficult match to referee for Kiros Vasaris, but he's done a very good job. Well, it is when people are trying to hoodwink you. It looked like he was there, but the referee spotted that and said, no way, it's a, th a throw-in to Australia. Marquinhos, time running out for both teams in regular time. Bruno opens the door slightly there for McAllister. Here's a chance for Australia. Diorio and was fouled by Wellington. Somewhat of a professional field to win that challenge. So what do you do here, Ricky? You've got, uh, you're in time money on, you've got a free kick. Do you go and try and nick it and win it? Or do you sit, sit back and say, we'll go for extra time? Well, uh, just a substitution coming on just now, Steve. Uh, Ian Fife coming on to replace Kenzel Sheriff on, on the left-hand side of the park. But uh, for me, they've left uh, Madashi back, who seems to be the biggest tall defender that the Australians have. He's happy to deliver into the box. I'd give this one a shot. I think they need to get something and something on target. McDonald, nice ball then for Fife, who tips for the back post. His first touch was far too heavy. It was a pressure situation to be introduced to. Yes, and just in that instance, it's probably we probably didn't want a substitution because Cancel Sheriff is very good. He's been on a while, and uh, Fife's first touch just not good enough. But it was interesting to note that uh, Australia left all three of their central defenders back there. They said, forget it. If we win it up there, we're going to nick it. It's going to be stolen, and we're going to extra time. This final is going to extra time. Two 15-minute periods. It's been a tough defensive struggle. Brazil has not been able to break the defensive shackles of the Joeys. And after 90 minutes, the score here at North Harbour Stadium, Australia nil, Brazil nil. There you have it, extra. Well, there you have it. Brazil wins and Philly kicks eight to seven over the Australians as the Brazilians are very proud of what they did. Take a look at the penalties. The captain, Mark Burns, misses the first one, setting the stage for the Brazilians. And then the save, but no. Leandro finished it. Uh, Joseph Diorio, the Verde Raymond product. Marquinhos finishes, actually went just wide. And Van Stratton was punked. And then Tro finishes it off. Eduardo there. Marashi, the big defender, calmly slots it. Walker, the captain, finishes his as well. Jade North gets a little help, but his goes in. Ricardo. McAllister. Oh, look at Leo, left and right. Golding finishes off. Bruno does the same. Kennedy. Souza calmly slots it. Then Ian Fife. Would leave the door open. Rubinho with the save off the post. And then the substitute Wellington underneath Van Stratton's hands. And that would be it. Brazil, the 1999 FIFA Under 17 World Champions. Want to thank the best soccer production crew in all of soccer. I've been your host, Alan Hopkins. Thank you for joining me. Innovator Sports Marketing brought you all of these games. I'll be back. Ciao for now.
Okay, guys, Matt, you get slammed.